Hey guys, welcome back to the HH Gaming Podcast. Now, it's been a while since we have done a podcast and we thought as we're all heading to Vegas for TwitchCon in America in about crazy enough two weeks, I thought I'd get the gang together and we'd have a bit of a chat about, you know, what's been happening over the last six months. What are we expecting from TwitchCon? What can you expect from us? And a bunch, just have a bit of a nice chat and have a bit of a, a, bit of a catch up really. So we have got today, we've got Fiction. How's it going, Hi. Fiction? Yeah, yeah good. Go. good, good. It's in the house, boss man. Uh, we've got Hell Hades, the true boss man. Mm -hmm. Hello! Although, you know, <laughs> fiction, still a boss man. And we've got yeah. YST as well, also a boss That's man. That's good. Sort <laughs> of. It's still off. I don't know. <laughs> We're all real man here. Yeah. <laughs> How is everyone cruise, doing today? Yeah. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, good. Been incredibly busy. Um, I think it's probably been, what, six months since we've done a podcast? It's 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 been a while. Um, in a minute. Ob obviously... A lot has happened uh, in in that time. We founded Fateless, um, and along with HH Gaming, uh, we are now developing our own computer game, which is uh, pretty insane uh, to be able to say out loud that Very insane. Um, that we're we're actually building our own game. Um, and obviously, as well as that, when we're going to Vegas. Uh, after that, Simon and I are also then flying off to Crete uh, to meet with some of the developers at Magic Media. Uh, for a week to spend some time with them there and then we'll be back to the uk just in time for christmas <laughs> yeah your jet lag is gonna be horrible right this, this year's just gone so um yeah yeah your jet lag is gonna be absolutely horrific like me and me and yst will be like there chilling on the chilling in the desert hopefully not getting abducted by any chilling in the desert yeah i'm lucky that's the first time i've heard someone say that just chilling in yeah the just desert. chilling out in the they desert got aircon, haven't they it's, it's yeah. fine yeah, well, yeah. aircon in the desert yeah oh okay yeah. apparently there's gonna be a heat wave this weekend in the uk i've, I've been told True. by yeah, there is, sources yeah. So, so I I think I'm I'm lucky in terms of the jet lag thing because one I'm a complete degenerate and I stay up until like three o'clock in the morning most days anyway. However, um, I also, as Lady H points out, every time that she sees me, I never open my curtains. So I, I I basically live in like this 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 dark darkness. I even have Chicago time on my watch just so that I know when to have meetings with Sham. Um, <laughs> so. I'm pretty adjusted to the whole US time zone. Um, I'm saying but, that. But Vegas is a bit worse though, isn't it? It's yeah. not just like, so I was thinking, oh yeah, probably about five hours difference. It's not it's five some, hours. It's, it's a seven. lot more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And jet lag's different. Like, so so fix you you haven't flown long haul before. Like no, nope. I've I've flown loads of long haul flights. So I'm used to like kind of the realities of if you don't sleep on the plane, you're great for jet lag. If you accidentally fall asleep on the plane, jet lag hits you like a boatload. So it, it yeah. it's, it's jet lag's a bit weird. It's a bit different to most things, just because it kind of like messes up your body clock a little bit, and you end up just being different time zones. But um, but yeah, I mean, also Vegas doesn't sleep right either, right? So really, it's it's this it's kind of like New York, the city that never sleeps, but also gambles constant, and you might get like kneecapped by a mob <laughs> boss. So it's <laughs> you know, every day's in a red. Did you see by the way the um the their new their new eyeball globe thing? I don't really know the what sphere. to call it. Yeah, yeah, people it's... keep mentioning this to me. I, I I've only What's mentioned this? To, so What's it, a hotel. I, so no, no, I've said to like three people that we're going to Vegas, and two out of those three people have turned around and said, "Oh, you have to go and see the sphere." And I had no idea what it was until I googled it. I'll let I'll let Paul explain. But yeah, so this like this billionaire guy, you know, as billionaires are, they like to like play with things. Um, spent spent about a billion or two on making a massive globe, like, and it's completely LED screens. Inside and out. Oh, it the looks whole insane. Thing. I'm seeing it just now. Damn. And they've, so basically it's a massive, it's a really expensive thing. But the idea is like, you can basically have, like you look on the Las Vegas skyline and you see this massive globe and they, they can basically make it into anything you want, like basketballs. At the moment, I think right. they've made it into a Halloween pumpkin because is it, it's October. Um, you can buy it like as, a, as a, a brand, you can buy advertising space on it. It's expensive. It's like 450,000 pounds for a week. Well, um, we but inside... He's going to put just faithless all over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> HH Gaming and Faithless have arrived. Yeah. Um, Why are we not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> 10% oh, of just the money. Just sell a Lambo, yeah. Simon, and we've got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We'll sell, we'll sell a couple for that. But inside, the entire thing is basically like all LEDs. So you sit like down in like a theater kind of thing. And I think um, U2 opened it. I think it was U2. 
and like there's some of the scenes in it, it's like insane like they basically put like the whole thing as like you're in a desert and then you're not in a desert and then they had like words flying around like in terms of like visuals it's like mental kind of thing like what they've invented it's almost like you're in a holographic theater um but yeah oh, right. it's just it's just because they when you go and fly over it's so big like that when they put advertisement over it it's like a massive basketball i think they had like um eyeballs showing up on it and it was really creepy that one was i i have a feeling it's actually very close to our hotel um so it shouldn't be a problem we'll see uh, it probably yeah i mean they've got to make a lot of money back because they spent a lot of money on it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's cool though yeah I, I, uh... I was showing uh, YST some of the eating challenges that we can take uh... on while we're over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, that and, and the one that I showed you is literally just outside um, uh, our hotel. Uh, so it's it's a, a, a restaurant, but it, the restaurant's set up like a hospital and you have to go in and you put a hospital gown on when you go in. All of the drinks fed to you in um, like IV bags um, right. and, what and now? You, uh, yeah and if you fail to finish your meal they spank you yeah, this... <laughs> what? what sort of things are you looking at dude? You excuse me <laughs> i was just looking at the luke car i was like wait yeah. a second i don't know about that man i was like oh things to do in vegas we need to we need to come up with some cool ideas and yeah this um, this place came out it just turned out it's right next to our hotel so i mean i'm not i'm not sure we can classify that as um something to do that's <laughs> Like like that's what that is. But that's it's, it's, it's like, yeah, look, this is just like a team outing. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> most team building exercises yeah. is like escape rooms, and yours is like, no, 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 go to the hospital gown restaurant, yeah. spank hotel. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah. got a receipt? No, but I've got a picture of me being spanked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just count? proof of proof of purchase. <laughs> I mean, Vegas uh, is crazy, right? When we yeah. were looking for for hotels, like it's literally like I've not been to America at all. Uh, it's one of the places I was on my bucket list for a while i was wanted to do like the fly into one side of american like drive across on the route 66 kind of thing like that kind of i mean obviously i know it's not the same thing but um that kind of fun thing but um like just seeing everything that is available in vegas is, is crazy like you know they've got hotels with pyramids they've got an empire state building they've got like um oh, i don't know if they've got that but they've got like a um uh what's it, the statue of liberty there's a, mm -hmm. like a king arthur palace i'm like <laughs> yeah what yeah. is this place there's literally everything <laughs> in there go I mean, big you... or go home that's what it is. Well, I mean, yeah. it's go everything, really, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy. So we're we're flying in on like Tuesday, but it's like late Tuesday. So we we were there for like a good week. So obviously TwitchCon is on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a three day, isn't it? In yeah. America? So if it's if it's like obviously if you guys remember when we were in Amsterdam last year for TwitchCon, uh, the Friday is like the day when you just go pick up your tickets. There's probably the partner event. I know uh, we've got. Um, an event with AMG um, on one of those days um, and then the Saturday and the Sunday are like the actual days that TwitchCon itself is, is open to go and look around I don't know if that's any different in the US one I imagine they're still keeping it a two day event um, uh, but there's there's so much going on there I feel like the the one we went to in Amsterdam was very cool but I think we all agreed when we came back from it, it wasn't really about the actual event itself. It was about the networking and the people we met and, yeah. and the I stuff going on out. Yeah. And the, you know, going to the bars and, and things like that with it and meeting up with other creators. And I think for us, especially because if you look at how many of us are going, um, which has actually got to an, an insane point now. So obviously there's the four of us here. Um, we've got Sham and Dirk from the Fateless team. We've got M Tashed, Ash is coming uh out to hang out with us um uh darth chosen veil shot's gonna be there uh dead Deadwood. jedi yeah. yeah so i mean we've literally got a, a massive crew um obviously as as well completely forgot to mention um lady h is coming with us lockers is coming with us um yeah, don't forget Lady H now. Come on now. He's you yeah, get in the doghouse. I dare to. Um, <laughs> but but in addition to that, obviously, uh, we're going and uh for the first time we're gonna be meeting up with Gary, who's the uh one of the uh, or is the lead investor for Fateless, um, and seeing like how they how he lives and and things like that. And it's it's just gonna be such a jam-packed experience. I, I really just can't wait to to get on the plane and get going. Yeah. Has anyone has anyone been to Vegas before out of us? Of our group? No. I've always wanted to go. This is like 
uh once in a lifetime thing that is like it's just that i don't know do you only like see a, it on like the it's like a bucket all the list time? type of thing yeah yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. So, it's one of those experiences. There is everyone that's gone there that I've known only goes for like maybe three days or four days. When I said I'm going for like just over a week, they're like, "Damn, man! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, bro. <laughs> gonna need that IV drip, not any food. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on purpose. Like, you're more IVs and have, 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 you, have you been before, Simon? No, no, it's oh, always okay. been like like a top. Well, <laughs> we'll see, but yeah, yeah no, it's always been somewhere I've absolutely wanted to go. So, and like. My cousin has been like five times or something. He's the cool. same sort of age as me. And I've always been like, damn, he's going again. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. Lockers has been. Where, he already? Lockers oh, he, just came yeah, he back. Went, yeah, he just yeah, came he back. Just really like, recently. Just, yeah. just stayed out there, really. Yeah. You know, met us out there. <laughs> was, he, went, uh, he went out to see Adele while he was out. It's, it's a bit of it's a long way to go to go see a, a British singer. Really, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like you're going to fly yeah. all the way over to America just to watch someone who's from your same country. It's a bit crazy, to be honest. But they... J- Jack always amazes me um, with like his trips because it is out of nowhere. He's like, oh yeah, I'm going to Italy this weekend to the Grand Prix, and yeah. um, and it's like, oh, I'm just flying to Vegas to um, uh, to see, see a Adele. Concert. Have a sing along. <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's a well-traveled individual. Is uh, is, he uh, is, is yeah. Yeah. Um, making the most of things. Um, he'll be our tour guide for the first day, I guess. When we're trying to figure out where the hell you we should need get to go. him. You should get one of those boards to put up in his room with the little dart thing on it, and you can pinpoint everywhere that he's gone. It's probably maxed up already. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> you just check out the no, stats no, his, his dart skills. It like literally just be holes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no bullseye going on there. Yeah, um, but, but yeah, yeah I so mean, long long haul um flight though is something that i've never been on uh so that's going to be interesting i mean for somebody who me personally i'm not the biggest fan in the world of flying anyway yeah, as, fire, are you? That, we're gonna as, literally do so many miles in the yeah, space of a couple of weeks so so for us we're flying from from london to vegas then we're going from vegas to chicago from chicago to zurich then from zurich to greece um i mean bucket list <laughs> I always like yeah. to, whenever you're in the layover, I always like to like kind of have like a mini review in my head of the airport because I had to lay over in Madrid once. I was like, oh, Madrid airport's not too bad. You can get to see a, a little bit of Madrid. And then some of them, like Doha is like a city and within a city. It's, it's, I, I don't know if anyone has been like a layover or, or like a transfer in Doha. Like that airport is huge. I mean, you know, it's big when they have an actual tram system, not outside the airport, but in the airport to get around the airport. And it's just like, it's like a massive airport is crazy i've never seen anything like where, it where uh, else is that qatar oh okay it, it tends to be like the gateway like it's the amsterdam of going to asia these days i tend to find that most things seem to seem to, seem to lay over in in doha if you need to transfer to go to like when i was going to nepal um that's where we kind of laid over whereas when it was sort of south america it was like london to madrid and then madrid down to south america on on, on a full long haul i mean it is a different experience totally long haul to short haul um i know i'm not allowed to sit next to you because of my um commentary no, of, you're not. Oh, I, i'm sure that you know this plane looks a bit ropey you know it's, as uh, somebody who's nervous <laughs> and yeah. flying and the thing is I'm, I'm not even that bothered i've been on so many planes in my life it, i just i just don't enjoy it um and we we were flying to amsterdam it was it was amsterdam wasn't no it was it? bulgaria it was was it when we went to Romania? But Romania, sorry, Romania. Not Bulgaria. Yeah, Romania. I don't know. We get, either way, we get on an aeroplane, we sit down. First thing, Paul t- turns around to me and says, it'd be uh, pretty weird if this thing crashed, right? <laughs> oh, it's just this <laughs> guy, man. It's just yeah. like... <laughs> well, it's, the problem with these like short haul <laughs> flights is the planes are very ropey. I mean, like you, you kind of look it around, is. you're I like, think... oh, this looks a bit dodgy. You know, it's about it's like when you go on one of those like old like public buses, you're thinking, oh, this one's got like a year in it before they replace it. One of the new fancy ones, or when you go on the underground and you get like, if you go on the Elizabeth line, they're all like fancy new tram, you know, trains and everything. Oh, this really, looks good. and then you go on like the circle line you're like this thing looks like i might actually be like murdered in it it's not great <laughs> you know it was a bit like that you know you didn't tell me you had an, you were you were a nervous tendency i'm a commentator when it comes to flying oh, I, get really I know excited, i know. know point made um but no i, I mean it's, so I'm it's, banned it's, this time. it's it's not something that like i wouldn't allow it to like limit me from experiencing these things but it's just i i think I, I, as i've got older i just don't really like being on airplanes anymore I think um, because we're sitting in the middle, right? And it's like in the middle rows, usually mm-hmm. on these smaller hall flights, you're kind of very close to the window yeah. and you realize Grand. that you're always on the plane. I think when you're well, in the, this... like the when you're on the longer flights, right? And you're like you're watching your movies and you're just talking and stuff, you forget you're even on the plane. Yeah. So. 
I mean, we can face easier. it this time, though. At least we're actually sat on the same plane as each other, whereas okay. if Simon was to yeah, uh, well, book it... I've got to but... be honest, like, we are pretty close to each other, which isn't perfect for me. Like, yeah. I do prefer for us to space out a bit more. <laughs> we, we, we should add the context to this. Um, the, yeah. the, the Romania trip wasn't organised by um, by Fiction. It was oh, somewhat no, organised by um, Hal Haiti. somewhat, I say, because... I don't know the story, so what happened do, with do that you one? Not? So... No. The the morning <laughs> of, um, our, it's our not trip, as bad as it sounds. Like <laughs> uh, Simon Simon puts a message in our group chat, and I've actually got proof of this on Twitter. So I'm just going to load it up now, and I will um send this over to be edited in so that you guys can see it here as well. Um, but the morning of si Simon basically put a message out in our group chat saying, uh, "Oh, looks like we're making some new friends today." Um, with, <laughs> that was with, exactly with a what he said. Now, bear, bear in mind, I, I believe the Romania trip was actually on Ra Rachel's birthday as it well, was. wasn't it? That's what was worse. Um, it was literally her birthday. <laughs> so, uh, Simon, uh, Simon, we sent see this, each other a lot. We don't need to be sharing the old seats. <laughs> <laughs> and our seats were Simon was on seat seven B. Rachel was on seat 18A. I was on seat 9F. And Paul was on seat 32A. Oh. You, you, literally, if you if you had like a plane map and but don't you, you feel like, seats, like if you're watching the film apart. and stuff, if you're watching the film, you just want some time to yourself to watch that film. You don't really want to be like, oh yeah, let's chat <laughs> yeah, about something else. It was called film Wiz Air. <laughs> It didn't even have computer yeah. screens. It's it's called Wiz Air. It was like yeah. a question mark whether the plane would actually like you know relieve itself in the middle of the air. Like I don't yeah. know who that, came up that with that was name. A questionable flight to say the least, and followed by the most questionable road trip. Oh that, God! Um, oh yeah, the road I've trip was definitely... ever experienced in my life. Um, <laughs> I mean, dodged. I mean, the price of the car was rough. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Hell Hades was in the office, very unhappy for a good was twenty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what did he tell you? Basically, it was something like, um, "You can either pay this fee, or if you don't pay that fee, there's a very good chance you're going to like, I don't know, pay a huge fee or something." Right? Was yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, even yeah. and. Things we pre-booked the car is what pissed me off. We pre-booked the car and paid it already, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, by the way, there's just this extra two grand, and you're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't happy with that one. Oh, wasn't, it, wasn't it something like if you bring the car back and there's any dent or scratch, it's like a huge fee. But yeah. if you pay this like a hundred quid, then it doesn't matter what condition you bring the car back in. You don't yeah. have to pay anything it extra. Just wreck it. You could like yeah. total it. I was yeah. like. And bearing in mind, like we didn't really know the roads, and yeah, it was like we were okay. We didn't in the end, speak English. Nobody was... spoke English. And, no, um, not happy. Yeah, and, there's and, no vegetarian and, food. I mean, well, it was a bit yeah, of a... and then we tried to get Paul vegetarian food, um, which is just frowned upon everywhere. Um, not in America. Uh, this is my no, dream. No, 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 we went into the McDonald's. It was like, have you got a vegetarian uh, meal? And, and they're like. Uh, and then didn't really know. And then it was like, "What is that?" Oh, yeah. we could do you just a bap with lettuce. <laughs> I got a big tasty without the big tasty, yeah. basically. Yeah. It was just basically big a big tasty, tasty with lettuce. Wait, <laughs> it was bread and lettuce. That was. You do know that you can actually just use the machines, right, and change it to English on the touch no, no. screen thing. The problem is, no, no, no. The, the issue wasn't the language. It was a little bit because we were trying to explain to them what vegetarian meant. So, like, um, I think you said in the end, <laughs> no meat. <laughs> Also, and, uh, it was like 11 at night. We were did you just show them a picture through. of lettuce? And be like, no, no, it's hilarious. It's it's you know, McDonald's has a McPlant, right? That's that's kind of like the McDonald's. Yeah. They don't do McPlants in Romania. There is no, there's no such thing as like vegetarian, like meat free. Like it was, there was no option. So the option was the big tasty without the, the, the meat. So which, I mean. So it's just a big it's, lettuce then. It was a lettuce sandwich. sandwich. A lettuce. With, chip, with fries. Fries, we you know, fries. We, we always check that off, off the list, um, which is basically your diet when you go anywhere abroad um, in Europe, specifically, apparently. But in America, it's going to be a dream. You all guys are going to be like, oh, I don't know. I'm really like, I'll have this one, and maybe I'll have that one, and maybe you know what? Today, I fancy going this type of cuisine because the world is my oyster in Vegas. It's going to be going amazing. To a steakhouse. Well, I'm going to have a vegetarian. There's one stuff. in the hotel, right? It's supposed to be like a famous one. Yeah. Um. So you can what steakhouse? Yeah. yeah. We don't yeah. know. I mean, me, me and uh, me and YFC got to try out the uh, the American Dominoes. Apparently, that's what yeah, that's what we've so, made an arrangement. You know, we made a, we made an arrangement, right? Because me and Saf love barbecue based Dominoes, right? It's like the thing. So we're gonna every time that we go somewhere now, we have to just try their Dominoes to see if it tastes like the UK. So that's yeah. the we should make a whole channel on that. <laughs> which is <laughs> which is the best Dominoes. So I mean, on on that note, uh, obviously, whilst we we are out there, we are taking some cameras with us and 
Um, I'm sure everyone will be uploading bits and bobs to their channel. Uh, obviously, we've got our editor who's not coming with us, so he will be um, able to hopefully get some videos out and, and things like that. I personally have made a commitment to my children um, because it was basically the only reason that I could get them to be cool with the fact that I was going to be away for nearly two weeks. Um, uh, they are staying with my mum, so I'm, I'm not just like <laughs> the just in the house. Them, abandoning <laughs> the, the, them. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I have agreed that I will upload a daily blog type upload thing to oh, my channel. To oh no! Um, oh, so no. every day when they slope. finish school, which will be 4 p.m. UK time, I've said that I will have a video of what we did the previous day. Um, for them to watch after school. So whether I can keep up with that every single day, I'll do my best. But um, I guess at the very least, uh, you could just like, you can film some stuff on your phone and do the little movie editor, just send it to like on the mm -hmm. phone so they can see yeah. you. Like well, it's, it's one of the main reasons that I'm trying to learn Final Cut on the Mac because... Uh, it's just way more convenient. Yeah. To, I think to it will be cool that. though, like because um, from what we do anyway, we're always doing gaming. People see half our bodies, right? I remember when we posted pictures, they're like, "You got legs," you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I think I think <laughs> from this space, what's really missing is like our personalities outside of gaming and stuff. And because we're going to be seeing like each other and then all the other creators and things, it would be cool if we can capture like some really good videos just for yeah, the community as well. Yeah. We're gonna try. So we're gonna try but our best to we, we, keep that up. Yeah, we plan to do it in. Amsterdam TwitchCon, you know, in European TwitchCon. And I think um, we did a bit, like we went on the boat ride, which was, um, yeah. you know, interesting. Y you, know, you know what it was with TwitchCon is uh, in Amsterdam, we were only there for like two and a half days. It was brief. And as well as that, we'd all been working so flat out for the mm -hmm. year before that. I think we all just needed to switch off and just enjoy ourselves, which I'm, yeah. I'm still 100% going to spend time doing. Um, but at the same time, going to Amsterdam is uh, for a weekend is a little bit different to you know a two week trip where you're going to be visiting yeah. multiple places. And I actually feel like a lot of this is uh, so much is going to happen so quickly while we're out there um, that I actually want to video it to even remember it so that we can look back and be like, oh yeah, like, yeah, we've actually yeah. got a lot planned. Um, yeah, we do, cool. yeah. Yeah, because I think we're going to do um, we're going to do a hike with Sham, the, our local, because Sham's Rocks. American. Uh, if anyone doesn't well, know who Sham it's is, it's hot, right? It's hot when we're out there. Yes. It is. Right. Yeah, yeah so it's like thirty plus degrees, I think. Yeah, yeah. like I don't know. If you it's, know. It was it's so weird because tent, you know, at this but... time of year, right, when we go shopping, because I had to go buy some clothes and stuff. It was so weird because I was buying summer clothes for mm -hmm. like our winter. It's perfect. <laughs> you can get it cheap. Yeah, yeah, everything cheap, was on yeah. sale. I was like, yo, this is happy days, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've got to do the exact same thing: buy a new suitcase and a bunch yeah. of other things. I'm going on Monday. Because yeah. I, I, I actually said to Simon and Sham last night, I, I said, guys, I've literally booked Monday as a time slot where I am not taking meetings because I just need to go <laughs> shopping. And it's the only day between now and Vegas that I'm even going to be able to, to, to get out of the house when the kids aren't around and, and just get it done. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it, I think the Sham, anyone who doesn't know who Sham is, he's um, co-director of Fateless, lives in America, so knows more of the location than we do. Uh, it's going to take us, I think, and I think Gary's hooking us up as well uh, with a, a guy, uh, like a, a hike around, um, where do you say it was fixed? It was like- it's uh, red, red Rocks. Red Rocks. Um, so so I, I don't cool. know what it entails. Uh, the, the problem is Sham, as well as being all the other amazing things that he is in the gaming industry, he's also a rock climbing instructor. Yeah, well, um, like Olympic level. Yeah, Olympic level. Instructor. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is yeah. he really? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, so a, a casual hike for Sham. Yeah, this is uh, what I'm worried about. Wait, like do I need to get degrees. hiking Fine. shoes then? Like, what am I buying here? Because I've only got like normal trainers. I probably I've just want like um, trainers. I don't know. They like they call them uh, running like mountain running shoes, right? They they're very popular with people who do ridge running. Uh, you don't need to like get hiking boots if like as long as they're a decent trainer, I'd imagine. I mean, I can't what unless I'm he's taking us up into like. You know, unless, flops. <laughs> unless he's taken us to be eaten by mountain lions or something, I think we'll probably be fine. It's, yeah. it's, you know, I'm sure they have like jaguars or something out there, right? Yeah, I've seen some of those crazy videos. I'm not sure if it's Vegas where they're just hiking and then like some jaguar comes out of the thing and starts chasing you down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't I know don't how Dan's going to do that in slippers. You're going to be yeah. in slippers. I, I don't know if that, that is Vegas. But... <laughs> yeah, I think I think you'd be okay. But, um, uh, but it could, yeah. it could be cool. I think we, we, we're doing that. We're also obviously, the, we're going to be in TwitchCon for a couple of days. Um, yeah. We're also, uh, I think we're going to see Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil, yeah. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, meeting loads of people that obviously we know 
as you mentioned, you know, we know a lot of these people from their faces on camera, but we've never really met many of them apart from like, I think Deadwood we've met in, in, in person. Yeah. yeah. And obviously when we went to London, we met up with uh, Nub and Scratch and a couple of others, but yeah. you know, a lot of the American creators and a lot of the people over there, um, we, we haven't met before. So it's going to be really good to like, meet Ash, um, actually hang out with a lot of the AMG crew. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it'd be a good opportunity for us to kind of like bring the creator world into our, our content as well. Yeah. You know, bring you along with it a little bit as much as you know we're not gonna film every little moment of every little second but uh, yeah, yeah it's funny because it it always feels a bit awkward right when when you're when you're like oh, i'm just gonna film us walking along i don't know really how these creators do it and it's just like oh we're just gonna film naturally <laughs> yeah. what's going on as soon as the camera comes out it's like this isn't natural anymore like yeah you you're, got you're it. filming yeah. me in my face yeah um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess it's just a habit isn't it that, right we have to try and get past that yeah, I think it's just habit. I think you know, especially um, like you know, Jake and Bacon, these uh, IRL streamers. It's like their natural habitat, so it'd be yeah, quite weird. Like, they you know, didn't we have a started, camera when we started YouTube. It's like you have like that little script sometimes what you're gonna say, and then as you're going, it just becomes like second nature. It's just like once you've done it a few times, or like for at least an hour, you just you know, it's like speaking to like the normal camera. I yeah. Guess. So obviously, the the question that everyone's gonna be asking, everyone should be asking, who's going in the casino and who's gonna be pressing the little lever. I'm not going to be pulling any of no. the, the, the slot no. machines. I, I will the play blackjack. cards and I will play roulette. So um, Hades isn't pulling any levers; he's just clicking the buttons. Um, I'll, I'll <laughs> be playing some cards. I'll, no, I'll probably do the same as Dan. Some roulette. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yep. Um, but <laughs> I'm playing on the two feet with the limitation. Pre right? Predetermine how yep. much how much money, and that's it. That's that's the rules. <laughs> yeah. Lady Hades is by the door, listening to what you're saying. Yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're we're leaving the uh, fateless uh, marketing budget at home. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you've like earmarked like a thousand pounds for um, business uh, expenses. Yeah, per right? day. What would yeah, you do so... if one of you actually have like a dollar, right? You put it in a machine and you come out with like ten million, like one of those jackpots. Yeah, you know, crazy, right? I mean, yeah, we would just build more cool games, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> from a yacht. <laughs> from a yacht. Yeah, I, I, I probably, I'm going to stay away from it. I, I, I have like this feeling that I'll be very bad at it. And then I'll be like one of those addicted personalities where I've got to beat the, the, the system, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, you'll, uh, you'll find all the bugs in the machine. And stuff. Yeah, I just yeah. feel like if, if I can't rig the odds in my favor to win, I'll be just like, nah. And and to be honest, the concept the concept of like gambling to me is like, the, you know, the house always wins. I'm like, well, yeah. why would I, why would I essentially enable an environment in which they're always going to come out on top of me and then i always end up losing eventually it's just it's baffling i ironically you do look very similar to a guy on youtube who actually goes uh card counting in vegas and he's banned from basically every casino so i do wonder whether you're going to get flagged on the security i mean um, i might too <laughs> If anyone They're gonna see me first, I'll be invisible. Right? We should we should remember this moment, right? Because I, I just got this feeling that Taff's gonna do the opposite to this, and he's yes. gonna be like, "Of course he is." It'll go mental. And it'll be let's let's like, bear oh, in mind this is the Seth guy. Gone? And then, yeah. like two days later, it's like we need to do this in, podcast again. Like, it's like the hangover. Back his face. It's like <laughs> getting punched in the face by Mike Tyson and stealing his tiger and things like that. <laughs> um, I might do a bit of research but... on card counting, how to get away with it ethically. It might be fun, but um. You, what we have to bear in mind that this is this is Paul that we're talking about, the same guy that whilst we were in Romania, we all had a really nice time. We went to uh, Ivy Lee and Odd One's wedding, Lo lovely meal, food, drinking, dancing. We went home. Paul made friends yeah. uh, with Odd One's family yeah. and went off clubbing. Went clubbing like three oh, like two in the morning in nightclubs. That was a great experience. We were on the way <laughs> to the club and uh, the the taxi broke down, so it was it was raining. So we were like wheeling the taxi back so we can get to another taxi. Then uh, I think um, I don't know whether it's it wasn't Odwin's brother, but one of Odwin's relatives apparently is the local mafia boss or something. I don't know. Um, it's kind of cool. He's like, I know everyone in this place. Yeah, that's like, it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Um, so we kind of hang up. Drinks over there are great though. You could get a lot of shots for a very small budget. It's, uh, it was great. But yeah, it was fun. They yeah, got I'm back sure to the it's hotel. going to be like that in Vegas, honestly. No, it's going to be much more expensive. <laughs> well, I mean, they will ply you with free drinks as long as you keep gambling, right? Yeah, so if you're gambling, yeah. yeah. Free yeah. drinks. <laughs> you know? And we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for the, um, the, the, quote, hostess that's helping you, right? Helping you with your card counting and stuff. I don't know, man. You've been yeah, <laughs> you doing nice. research on this. You've already been doing research. It's Vegas, right? isn't it? This is what happens in Vegas. As they say, yeah. what's what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's, it's like all sorts of things get on. I bet. And I don't know. YST, before we even go to Vegas, you're going to uh, the KSI boxing match, aren't you? 
Yeah. Which oh, is right. pretty cool. I am yeah. Extremely jealous about. Um, is that in Saudi Arabia? No, no, no. That was uh, another one. This one's in Manchester. Oh, right. Okay. It is. I, always, I, start, I, I went. From, I went to the very first event, right? And then I, it's just become like a thing where I just go to every single one now. And I, co- I literally flew to Saudi Arabia not to miss out on one of the events. It was that <laughs> easy. But what it is like, with because obviously I've always been a huge like traditional boxing fan. But then seeing it like all the creators that you watch doing it in like the YouTube world in a sense, it's just like a cool event for people that create anyway. And you just go, you see everyone you watch, and it's kind of similar to like going to a Twitch con for me, right? Yeah. So yeah. You just see all these creators and for the first time and. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's become quite a big thing now, isn't it? Creative boxing. I know it's a bit of an off-topic thing from the Vegas, but um, yeah, it definitely. It is. seems to be like really popular now with like you know Jake Paul. I think Jake Paul and where you know the Paul brothers and and KSI have kind of like I I know maybe even the forerunners, right? They were the first ones to kind of do this whole creative boxing. But there's loads now doing it. Do you uh, um, see yourself doing a uh, creative boxing match, Simon? Uh, no, but maybe maybe Paul will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd be quick yeah, on my feet, but me. I'm not very nice. good at getting punched. I'll be honest. I, I, I prefer to, I prefer the person who's punching me to be like falling on their face. Um, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but but yeah, I mean, is that is that the, is that the match with um, was it Jake Paul or Logan Paul and Dillian Dennis or whatever his name is that everybody's all over Twitter? Yeah, that's like the co-main one. Yeah, 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 because he's like proper going in on his uh, on his fiance, right? Constantly tweeting about her or something. It's it's kind of crazy. So I've been on watching it on it, Twitter. Man. It's, it's they, they know how to pay the bills. Yeah, definitely. I think he spent like the last three months basically just making every accusation possible against his his fiance or something. I'm like, dude, I thought you were in for a boxing match. I thought it was against him. It's nuts. Apparently, he's getting sued now for something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> she sued him for defamation because apparently crazy. he hacked her phone and started leaking her like you know bad shops and, and all. <laughs> Honestly, it's crazy what some of the stuff he's going for. And like, I feel like Logan Paul is just going to go in there and just knock him out out of pure frustration more than anything else. <laughs> Well, probably. <laughs> like, I mean, if he was trying to like work up his opponent, he's probably done a very good job at it at this rate. Um, so I'm right, and she's probably like, Look, I just want to marry the guy, I don't want to be involved in all this nonsense, but um, that'd be cool, yeah. But so, in the background, he's like, This is what pays the bill, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah he's yeah, like, yeah. That pay- uh, pay per view is just going through the roof. Well, that yeah. is part of it, isn't it, with boxing, where like the, the promoters want there to be drama, right? They want there to be a big story behind it because obviously that makes it more engaging, I guess. You know, I'm not a boxing yeah. fan. I follow it from the from the outside. And so I don't actually watch it that much, but I do pay attention to like, you know, um how they progress in and, and that's how the first fighting. thing that I looked in in Vegas as well. I was like, is there a fight night on? I had to search and there's nothing on. <laughs> oh, they probably it's just is, like right? Some con- no, it's just concerts and stuff, man. Oh, like, oh, just sing Mahara okay. instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Celine Dion's no longer there now, right? Because she's, oh, she's not. I don't think she's in a resident red, residence anymore because she's um, not well. So we can't sing "My Heart Will Go On" as the fountains go off. That's a shame. <laughs> oh, you still can, Paul. Don't worry. That that will make it. To I, the I'm blog. sure you still will. Yeah, I'm sure we can I'm sure we'll find it. <laughs> so out, outside of Vegas and all, all the other stuff going on, um, obviously there's been quite a lot of things going on. I guess within the gaming sphere and things like that, we've all been trying new games and and and, mm-hmm. and, and things like that. Obviously, Simon, you've started your new Watchers of Realms channel yeah um how how are you getting on with that what's your overall feeling of it so far i'm honestly loving this game like the watcher of realms for me is just a bit of a breath of fresh air at the moment it's um feels fresh it's got some cool mechanics in the game uh it looks great i kind of like tower defense style anyway so that works for me but yeah i've got to say like the more i've played it the more i've enjoyed it so yeah, can I ask you, cool. Can I actually ask you a question on on that game, right? Hmm. So I've been playing it a bit behind the scenes, and yeah, it's like we we kind of get to these next levels, we get better gear, we get better champions. But what's the kind of end goal in the game? Like I, I was kind of I was searching around, and you know, there's faction wars in a sense, and some other things. But and then the PvP is like a different style. It's like you kind of just fighting waves faster than the other person, right? So what's yeah. the kind of like end game? So we we're climbing all these things, we're getting all these champions, but then for what? In a sense. So I guess there's there's a couple of things at the minute, and it probably is it might be where it lacks. I don't know. So I'm not probably yeah. end game myself, but getting to the the final level of guild boss like raid, um like clan boss, yeah, is kind of like the first thing I'd say, which is proper end game. Pushing PvP towards the kind of final levels is end game. But mm-hmm. actually they've released something called Boy Drift, which you probably haven't seen yet, I guess. I seen your thumbnail yesterday of like oh, yeah. it is <laughs> hard. Like I, I did normal for the first time this week so difficult like it's really difficult content so and there's hard and then nightmare after that so that's kind of mm-hmm. like i guess in the, at the moment that's their most end game content that they've got 
Uh, and they're actually, I think it's next week, releasing Guild Wars as well, which is, um, which looks actually cool. Like it looks looks like they're going to do a. So good they're adding job all these it, layers so. to it, yeah. Because yeah. I've, I've I've been doing the campaign right, and I've I've like one below or something. But then I was just thinking, I was trying to search around and just see what's actually available after that. So it's cool that there's stuff coming out and stuff. Yeah, because I mean you've got like the normal. It's actually quite hard to get to the end levels for gear grinding. So that's. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a part of Endgame because obviously you're you're generally just leveling up your account and stuff like that. But in terms of like the hardest content, the Void Rift seems to be the one. Um, and you know, I'm well, I'm still only like 25 days in or something like that. But it's yeah, I mean, I did normal and it was. It's crazy tough. to think that you're 25 days in, and c- congratulations on your new channel as well because yeah. it's you've you've been smashing it, man. Like yeah, I I. I I'm shocked, honestly. I thought it would yeah. be a real slow burner, but there's definitely like there's enough players out there that are loving the game that want content. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm pleased with that because obviously I'm still obviously doing the raid content, and but this is for me, it's it's quite nice to have a game where everything's challenging again because yeah, you know, for raid, obviously on on my main account, there's not much which is what class is a true challenge at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, just just kind of gives me a, a different focus and something else which is it's fun to do you know that's kind of what mine and saf's um addiction to dragon yeah, is at the moment yeah so you guys are like, taking on with <laughs> yeah. dragon Air. like yeah. talk us through that how's how's that going i guess because we i had a, well we had a sponsor right for it and yeah. i was playing it at first i was a bit slow burning into it i was like oh i'm not sure like it's a good game is it for some reason it just got a hold of me like the sponsor was finished and yeah. i just find myself in my spare time like me and saf will just sit there for an hour before going to bed every day just playing dragon Air, doing that's so thing. cute <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> it's, it's, i see you too honestly, i do like, I'm like oh someone's in the in the like the chat channel on our discord yeah. i'm like it's gonna be sap and wise yeah chat. we'll, we'll come out of a meeting time. and i just see yeah. like that square box of like there's someone streaming in the channel it's yeah. just like oh they're in there but i don't want to go disturb them you know but, <laughs> but normally yeah <laughs> to be fair like usually it's like we're speaking about like stuff on the website as well but yeah. then we've got the game on the side as so it's kind of like a half meeting but dragging it as the excuse so yeah but, yeah normally wise he's like a, a, like working on a few champion bios and different things so i just like hang out and like have a chat and catch up with him you know yeah. checking how he's doing and everything like that but lately yeah. it's, it's been like an hour or so where we like it's kind of like mutual frustration with Dragonair because Dragonair is one of those games where the start is actually really, really fun, right? I, I tried Watcher Realms last night and we were talking just before we started recording and I found the start of Watcher Realms a little bit like, why is the game playing me, right? I was like, the tutorial is over. I, I understand the concept, right? I put my, my, I figured it out. I put my guys on the thing and I have to stop them getting it. I got it. I get it. Stop telling me what to do. Whereas in Dragonair, they're almost a little bit like the the start is really good. Like you, you kind of like get to play it. They're not like pack spamming. You've got lots of story, you've got lots of different quests and side adventures to do. And then you start hitting like walls where it's like, okay, well, I need to do like stage four of the dungeon. But to do stage four of the dungeon, yeah, I need the gear from stage four of the gun dungeon, right. which I don't have. And then it's kind of like, I don't have much gear to do what I need to do. So you even this like weird space where, okay, well, to progress, I need the next stuff, but I, I haven't got the next stuff to progress. And there's lots of like those little walls, which I guess is part of the whole progression thing, right? You have it in every game where yeah. the challenge is to beat the next stage. And once you start beating the next stage, then it becomes easier. Uh, so me and YST, like, just there, like, I think YST was doing Faye Meander I... the other night. And yeah. there's, this, there's this boss, basically, that pulses poisons on you. And every time it puts a poison on you, it gets a damage stack. So the, the concept is don't get poisoned. Otherwise you die. Right. And... For some reason, in my account, when I was getting chests, all I could keep getting was resistance chests. So it's like it's like raid, you get attack percentage, you know, defense percentage. And YST literally crafted about 200 pieces and he walked away with like one resistance chest. <laughs> so yeah, it's like brutal. I was literally on the call with him going, ah, oh, just 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 stick resistance on with a resistance. So it's easy. I got through it. No problem. He's like, yeah, I have no resistance chests. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Um and it's, it can be quite frustrating because you're hitting those walls and then it's like, how do I progress? And you go through these phases in Dragon Air where it's like, you pass that wall and all of a sudden you've got a whole new boatload of content and you're feeling like, this game's amazing. And then you hit another one like, I hate this game and we don't even talk about the <laughs> yeah, I think, do you know what it is? At the same time, like with games like Raid and Watcher of Realms, I feel like you can kind of progress. You get your gear, you put it on and everything is kind of like, it goes in levels. With this one, because it's got the open world element to it, they kind of want you to go and explore, do the side quests and, you know, try and progress slowly in a sense, instead of just rushing to get yeah. to the end game. So it's kind of like, it's different, but it is a breath of fresh air in that way. It's like, even when we hit these hurdles, like 
sometimes it's as simple as just moving about where your champions actually place, like one in the back, the heel of in the front, where's your tank going to be? Like even those small little things beats the yeah. content that you think you yeah. couldn't do before. So it's, it's very interesting, like learning these mechanics in a game like this. It's like the first time I played something like this anyway. It, it, it's oh, very... I want to say though, like when I, so obviously I had it sponsored with it as well. Yeah. And I think it was a bit too narrative heavy for me it was just like yeah. it felt like it was very there is a lot i i, I yeah. just clicked the space bar you, and just clicking. spun through it yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. it does get better yeah. it once, does once get you, better afterwards yeah once you stop um once you start completing the storyline you know that narrative kind of diminishes a little bit but i mean they've gone more down the rpg route right they've gone yeah, 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 golders yeah, gate but, sort of uh style yeah. It's um, a totally just, different game. I just yeah. got to say, by the way, unfortunately, people probably won't have watched any of this, but the Baldur's Gate streams that we've done recently are oh, hilarious. Oh, so funny. It is such a good game. It like, is. Baldur's Gate 3 is such a good game. Like, I had tons of fun. Even when you I'll get be... kicked off a ledge, right? Yeah, Baby I mean, sitting pool. It... Well, actually, I should do a video on that. The but I know biggest liability. Was... <laughs> oh, so oh, well, throw me off this. To be off fair, this pool. The, the, I'm meant to be good, the tank. Sixty <laughs> percent of that stream, I was not the problem. It was Sham that was the problem because he was killing all the wildlife. He, <laughs> yeah, was, he was breaking okay. barricades. Okay. He got us killed twice. I be just honest, accidentally kicked the dwarf off the ledge. That my, entire okay. fight, though, must be one of the greatest comebacks yeah. from being close to death that Baldur's Gate has ever seen. Very cool. Yeah, um, have to have the invincible dwarf. Yeah, because uh, Paul pushed Simon off the edge. Um, Save me for the couldn't, spider. Couldn't get back. The spider killed all of us, and then Simon gets back and saves the day, r revives us all, and we end up killing the spider. Yeah. It's a proper Aragorn moment, really, with the blazing yeah, sword <laughs> and like yeah. one shotting things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, things you pass me stuff like those, uh, um, like exploding pots or poison yeah. pots or something. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'll see if these are any good. It's like I literally like took out a load of the little spiderlings. I'm like, hold on a minute, I might have a chance here. And then yeah. suddenly I ran up. I got this new ability I found. I ran up and I'm like, smack! On this just thing. one shot. Like, one Whoa, shot I just one shot the big spider. Right, we're back in the game. Yeah, yeah it was cool. So I just I was... kept feeding you health parts. I think at one point, Fix was like, how many of these things have you got? I was like, yeah, I'm just, usually been, you're like stockpiling. We're all like absolutely yeah. struggling for health parts. It's like, oh, well, I've got another seven of these massive ones. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, though. We're struggling for health parts because Paul keeps throwing us in situations where we have True. to get into combat. It's so funny. Run. When I'm watching when I'm watching the streams as the outsider, right? All I see is, Saf, what are you doing, man? Saf, I was like, oh my God, what's going on? I get man? very unfair blame, okay? I'm exploring different parts of the world that other people yeah. are not quite there yet. Yeah, we're, I'm we're not playing the one starting the fight. He's single player off on his own. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to strategically position for the higher ground to win the fight, okay? I may have jumped to hide from the initial shot, but that's not my fault. I didn't say trigger the barricade. That's all I'm saying, okay? That's a certain American friend that we know who decided the <laughs> goblin barricade needed to go. Yeah. And then we didn't kill the dwarf, you know. And the, his the... character's got a dark storyline going on. Yeah, like, true. Yeah. You know what's going on with it? <laughs> yeah. Wakes up in the middle of the night, hands and covered in blood. Someone. Yeah. And with just a body underneath him and he doesn't remember what happened. The, well, the... It's, it's more the fact that his reward for that was Dobby the house elf gave him the cloak of invisibility. I'm yep. like, why is yep. this now Harry Potter all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> it's dark honestly yeah. and meanwhile we're all asleep like can we get a bit of storyline is this yeah. the sham <laughs> yeah. show over here like yeah you know, we're all I, some action i am looking forward to carrying on with this this game though it's it's yeah i cool. i feel like I we don't really game. get far though every every but you know i don't even mind that i like uh, i i actually quite enjoy the fact that when we just jump on it's like okay we've picked up maybe two bits of gear each we've done a couple yeah. of big quests and then it's like fine yeah, I'm, I'm we were made like zero point five of a level. Uh, but, we've we've caused a lot of strife and torment. <laughs> but that's D and D. Off the ledge. Like, yeah. He, I mean, look at look at look at Gary. Um, he he's been running the same D and D campaign for forty years. Um, forty years. Yeah. Damn. So if it takes us forty you... years to get through Baldur's Gate, then it's it is it's a winner in my eyes. We're we'll gonna have to buy four new computers before we get there. <laughs> forty years. That's an insane long time. Yeah. Like, I mean, we played a bit of traditional what i'd call traditional dungeons and dragons right we played a little bit of it but uh mm. 40 years that's yeah, that's a commitment is that is wild. a commitment yeah. that is that is crazy um yeah i mean i really enjoy the Baldur's Gate three um stream just because it's it's totally different to what we what we do on a regular day-to-day -day basis right it's not like a, a gacha mechanic to it it's not like you know crazy. yeah exactly yeah you know i i am kind of annoyed though that season two of diablo 4 starts literally the day we leave the country oh really 
Are you are you yeah. kind of still quite big on the Diablo Four stuff? Well, I played season one. I thought season one was okay. Um, yeah. But then you get to the, season one. Is, the main problem with Diablo Four is you hit like level seventy, and then you're basically doing nightmare dungeons because there's nothing else to do. And you then go, why am I doing nightmare dungeons? Because I have nothing else to do. Uh, which you know, it's it. The game kind of released a little bit too early. So this new season, uh, they just uh, announced uh, they've got like a huge patch. Um, it's mostly quality of life things to fix fundamental flaws within the game. Um, but they've actually added five new endgame bosses. They're adding more diversity to it. They're, they're dealing with some like the looting issues. They've actually added a search box. I mean, it was ridiculous in Diablo 4. You, to, if you wanted to find a specific aspect, so the way that it works in, in Diablo 4 briefly is like you have legendary pieces and each legendary piece has like a legendary power. You can extract that power and put it on any piece that you want, right? So the, the when you get a legendary piece, you're actually just looking for the quality of the legendary affix. But they didn't have a search box. And you would basically have like six inventory style, five, four inventory stashes of legendary. And it's like, right, okay, I want one particular aspect. And you're like, one and you have literally have to hover over every single tile. So it's like lots of little things like that you would expect a modern AAA game not to be in. But um, the new season looks like, you know, I mean, they said something like there's 41 pages of patch notes, which right. is bonkers. I mean, I don't even know. I'm sure they're going to break some stuff. But they've just like targeted a lot of end game stuff activity. So it looks to be much more interesting. I mean, the theme is a little bit similar to season one where you have to like go collect powers and things. But um, are they doing another dev chat like next on the 10th where they're basically going to talk about class balances and stuff. So uh, it'll be fun. I, I, you know, with these types of ARPG games, like if you've ever played um, Path of Exile, you tend to start the season really strong for a month and then bit by bit, you're like, okay, well, I've, I've kind of finished the season. I'm waiting for the next season in, in a couple yeah. of months time, which is a bit like what Dragnir will probably end up doing a little bit, I guess, is you get to a point, I think, in Dragnir where you'll be like, well, I finished everything I need to. I'm just going to wait for the seasonal reset, which is kind of like how that game is going to keep itself alive. So it'd be interesting to see how that kind of seasonal thematic works in a, a more of a hero collector game. I'm actually quite curious to see how people will feel about getting all the heroes reset. Yeah. Um, Cause obviously in an ARPG it's better. It's easier, right? Because you start fresh. So, you know, it's not like you've lost anything because your hero goes, just goes into its eternal realm. You can play it if you want to, but actually the type of game lends itself to, um, to being, I need to want to restart my grind. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not really the same in Hero Collector, but uh, yeah. yeah, the patch looks great. I mean, if anyone has played Diablo Four and thought it was an awful experience, I think they should take a look at season two. Just have a bit of a bit of a meander mm-hmm. in there bit and a have a look. look. Yeah, and just because they've got so many quality of life changes, it's really, really good. In addition to that, we also have Arc Light Rumble launching in the first Warcraft. week. Of, uh, oh, Warcraft sorry, Rumble. Not, yeah, they've they've the changed the name. They've changed yeah. the name. Uh, first week Rumble. of November, which is a game that I've been waiting waiting for for well over a year now since they announced it. Yeah, um, more than that. We we actually have it was aspects May of it in the site too. When we've got a whole page on it. Yeah, we had we we built it in preparation because they said oh, I won't be long. And then we put nothing. And it was really long. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was. It was. It was a year and a half. Um, but um. But yeah, I, I know. Uh, chosen that has been out in uh, in Blizzard HQ. It's top secrets. Learning all different things about it. Um, yeah, I think it was BlizzCon, right? And no, BlizzCon. BlizzCon's no. the week after TwitchCon. I think they're just. Um, I think they pulled out a bunch of game. creators for it. Oh, is yeah. it? All right. Yeah, it was almost like a creator summit. They pulled out, and they've obviously announced that Warcraft Rumble's coming now. So. Um, that's probably a tie to it, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that, aren't we? Um, we're we're interested to see how they're going to deal. It's basically like a Warcraft hero collector, right? If, if yeah, kind of. It. It's it's like um, Clash Royale. Um, so it's Clash Royale, but more uh, with PVE aspects to it. So it's not just purely PvP. Uh, so mm. you've got dungeons, you've got a campaign, um, and things like that. But the PvP is still very much Clash Royale. Um, yeah. In the Warcraft realm, we, we, yeah, in in the War, Warcraft world, world, but that it, that's a game that even now, um, on my phone, it's the only game Clash Royale is the only game that I have on my phone because I, you know what's I like crazy. I've never minutes. played Clash Royale ever. You know, right? it's so no, good, man. but I always wanted to play this one, the yeah. Warcraft Rumble. Yeah, it's kind of like I was gonna try Clash Royale, and then I was like, oh, do you know, what? I just wait for the Warcraft one. Yeah, we'll see. yeah, yeah. And then it just took so long to come out, but. It'd be cool to. It's I might a great game. Just, it's just weird that they've they've had it out in Australia. I guess as a yeah. kind of like test bed, but for quite some time. Like, I'm surprised it's taking this long. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's way Blizzard. Too long. It's 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 traditionally, but Blizzard either release something way too quickly or they take way too long about it. That seems to be the way they trend. There's no real like this released exactly when it's meant to be. Yeah. Um, you know, because obviously Diablo Four came out probably a year too early. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And they often release WoW expansions before they're ready, really. Well, we are like expecting fixing. some very big news at TwitchCon, uh, TwitchCon at BlizzCon this year mm. about World of Warcraft. Um, whether it's the, either going to be the new expansion or people are even talking like WoW two sort of thing. Wow, oh, really? Um, oh, really? Um, yeah, we we do. It's it's rumors, but um, yeah, it it. Uh, so Chris Metzen, who was one of the he's back, isn't he? Core people in the World of Warcraft team is back, and he is basically the creative director now of Warcraft. And he was back when yeah. it, the game was good. Um, he so, is Mr. Warcraft, isn't he? Yes. I remember seeing all over Twitter. Everyone's he's the like, one that's on Warcraft stage. Is saved. Or, yeah, he's he's the one that you always see on stage saying, you know, like for the horde and for the alliance and getting the the whole crowd <laughs> riled up and things yeah. like that. Nice. Um, but they yeah. seem to be turning a corner over in Blizzard. Obviously, Microsoft is buying Blizzard. Um, and I think that's now cleared all its like you know anti competition things and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be, I think, a massive change because Microsoft will want to streamline Blizzard out of the, all the problems. I think the you know Bobby Kotick or whatever you know, Kotick or whatever his name is, he's going. I think I can't imagine he'll be staying around much longer. As soon as that happens, he's paying out. He's getting his cash out and leaving. So I think. Blizzard games, hopefully, you know, it's been a dark couple of years, really, in terms of, like, all the allegations and then mismanagement. Like, Diablo 4, for example, had, like, three different development teams in, like, two years, which is no wonder why it's in the the shape that it's in, because the core team that they've got now basically took over the development, I think, six months before release, which is why you have so many different parts of the game where you're like, well, this feels totally different development plans or direction compared to this bit so you know warcraft rumbles coming out new warcraft news hopefully blizzcon isn't um don't you guys like playing on phones we don't want that again <laughs> yeah um, oh yeah <laughs> that could be legendary twitch twitchcon as well there's tons coming up and obviously we're yeah. coming into q4 as well which is basically when every game company pushes mm. um which is great for us because advertising numbers go through the roof um, and we should say as well uh, we haven't had a patch for raid this week and traditionally speaking with raid if they skip a patch window, that normally means the next patch is big. Yeah, there is There's probably going to always going to happen. It's going to come out exactly when we go to Vegas. It's going yeah, to probably. Yeah, <laughs> I know the fusion happen. announcement will be because obviously the Halloween never is going to be the only one at work. Yeah, uh. <laughs> it, the, I think normally the Halloween fusion starts around about like three or four days before Halloween, so that'll put it basically as we're coming back. The, that fusion will start, but they'll announce it probably the week we're out there. So. You might all get a bit of a cheeky live Hell Hades YST Sephira <laughs> like a live stream reaction to the new fusion announcement. That'll be kind of like a yeah. bringing the gods of we, we can do a round together. table. Get 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 you guys chosen. Deadwood, all sit sit you around the table and we'll present the news to you and just see your live yeah, reaction. It'd be funny. So, <laughs> um, but I I actually think like they've already leaked and hinted about some sort of mythical hero. We don't know whether it's a boss or whether it's actually the champion. They've already what said as well. Do you prefer that's a boss or a champion? I think it's a boss. I don't want it to be a boss because that makes me feel like it's a single boss encounter and I don't want another single boss encounter. No, I, would... I don't know. I've, to me, it gives off some spider vibes. Like there's going to be like, I think you, vibes, you, yeah. you kill like all the different spiders and she's like the big one and she kind of swarms them at you. Maybe. That was my kind of first impression of it. But well, 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 we know they've said there's a major content piece. That's the word they've yeah. used, major content piece. And that is going, you know, I firmly believe, and I've said this on a couple of videos and live streams, that the mythical heroes, the mythical champions, I keep saying heroes because I've been playing Dragon here, um, they, <laughs> were, yeah. they were released before the content that made them relevant. In that sense, they probably were like, the champions are ready, is, let's just go with it. Like, you know, that, that's generally what they do, isn't it? They yeah. generally release before you need them. Yeah, and, and a little bit like, like you can't farm the mythical tomes. I think this new major content piece, there'll be some way of getting mythical tomes, right, in them rather than just doing events. So, what well, they've also said there is definitely going to be it's a free one where you can win or earn a yeah. mythical champion, which would make sense if this is a boss because currently it doesn't feel like there's anywhere they can just drop that in unless they did it as a the, the extension of Romanthu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they have they did say in the interview with Scratch that they wanted to have more mission-based content for Endgame because they wanted to try and extend the, the longevity of people after they hit Romanthu. Because they, they, they basically said their, quote, right. analytics, so I'll play a drop-off after they get Romanthu, right? And we know mission-based content is always really popular. Having something to do is more important than not having anything to do at all. So, um yeah, I mean, I mean, it'd be interesting. They have confirmed, I think, that the major content piece will be containing a free mythical champion. Like the capstone of that reward will be a mythical champion of some sort. 
Um, but they've been very light on details. It's just something. Do you think that, uh, sorry to cut you, do you think that it's going to be a new clan boss or do you think it's going to be a world boss? I think it's going to be more akin to Doom Tower. Okay, but do you know, do you know in terms of the Great Stage Void, right? Because do you think that yeah. the Great Void is going to be a clan boss or a world boss? Because I don't got, think like... it's anything to do with the Great Void. I think it's going to be a completely different so. content. No, I've, uh, it might be in that place. But I don't think it's going to be only... a clan boss. That's the only placement we've got left, isn't it? Yeah, it's well, the only one. Just that... add a new Unless one, it's an they? extension yeah, uh, to something that's already there, but... You know, Doom Tower was completely added as a new one. We always thought it was going to be like the the Iron the Twins Tower, or whatever yeah. it is, but it never really was. Um, I don't know. I I just feel like they've done a lot of content that is like single boss encounters, which is mm-hmm. fine to some extent to satisfy the needs of what they want. But I feel like they've hit a bit of a a crossroads now where they have to release something that is actually physically new content that needs to be beaten, um, mm-hmm. rather than just a single boss encounter. So. I don't know if clan boss is really another clan boss is really going to do it for people because they've already got Hydra, which is a bit of a, we, we, you know, we won't even get into that. And, you know, clan boss has been solved. I did wonder if it was going to be like hard mode faction wars, potentially. I do wonder if they should release that now with a new major content piece on the side, because like, like they do you know what? I was actually speaking about this easy. with, um, I made a video about like stuff to change that we'd like to see changes in radar. I mentioned that very briefly, but that would actually be a really good idea to have like up to stage 25. And then on stage 25, it's just a new boss and it's like got like a difficulty cap on it. So it's a bit hard to do. And then, um, have like, a yeah, I just, I just like a whole new reward track, put it like brutal hard mode, just make it like hard. So I have to work towards it. I, the biggest problem in raid right now is once you hit the point where, I'm at probably you're at YST where you definitely where you're at. Um, how Hades is, it's kind of like you have nothing to really progress towards because you've beaten Doom Tower hard. You've got Rom- Romanto. Well, I've got my Romanto. I don't know if everyone else has got their Romanto. Um, just so funny. I actually don't have Romanto because I don't want to. I want to have that feeling of I've not finished the game yet. I actually don't have Romanto either. <laughs> yeah. I literally, oh, I'm le- I literally left yeah. it on purpose so I don't have. So but, I'm like, oh, I haven't the other thing the is yet. like he's fallen so far out of any sort of meta play that it's just. I don't know. I don't feel as. Well, I mean, he's still really strong in a lot of non-meta strong, play. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying. But to be strong. honest, Hades only just got his dark K. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's got loads to get still. I'm yeah, about to true. get Jinra the stalk, and probably you're still on like I don't know Val. <laughs> Gwyneth. <laughs> I've got Gwyneth. Like yeah, Gwyneth is pretty far into the normal Doomtail, right? She's quite late. Yeah. If he's only just got dark K, he's nowhere near Gwyneth. Yeah, I'm. I don't think I've got any a... any other fragments since I got dark K. Honestly. Yeah, you still got the free to play journey to go in. That's exciting. Uh, ironically, you could probably just <laughs> auto farm it. Like you literally press because you, you the champions you've got, the oh, game you've got. I you could literally can. just auto yeah, the yeah. secret Two rooms. seconds. I just I just don't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's better than getting like five rare fragments for forge materials now, which is all we get because I've got all the epics. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting. I think it, you know what they're like. They they've got your calendar on tap. The moment you're out of the country, it's like right, major new content piece. Let's yeah. go. Let's pump it out. You know, I mean, last time you were away, it was like a new event every single day of some sort of craziness that oh, I was there dealing always with. Is. Yeah, yeah. So um, we'll have to see how that goes. But it's, I, as I said, I've, whenever they miss a patch, they never miss a monthly patch. Like it's very, very rare that they ever do. And when they do, it normally means that the next patch is big or that there, there's a reason why they're delaying and they, there's a two month gap um, because mm-hmm. they don't normally. I, I can't remember the last time we didn't have some sort of patch. Um, that actually wasn't like they obviously they added champions but all they did was add champions they didn't even update player and play because we didn't have to update anything so i do think the next update could be quite chunky hopefully it is because i feel like raid needs a bit of a win at the moment in their uh yeah it does in the circle yeah do you think that, so do, do you think that the phantom shogun was like a big flop because i did um, I don't think it was a flop. Oh, you don't I think do. it was a flop? I think it I was a really I think it was, flop. I think it was a filler, t- uh, filler um, content. Like a filler challenge, right? Because you still had to build a team and figure out the best teams for it and, and challenge it and find the solution. I do think that maybe the mechanics of it were a little bit too simple. I say that because they actually, do you know when there's something not going so well, they kind of tend to want to change things a little way. And they're actually changing the mechanics of the boss, which I found pretty interesting. Where they're gonna, you can start to block the enfeeble and all of that stuff to open yeah. up teams. So I just, but I don't really that... think it makes a difference to be honest, because I think people have already solved it right now. You yeah. know, in in essence, that is wasted development time that they could be putting towards new systems or actually fixing Cadaver or fixing like you know making Emic work. I mean, Shujen, the Void mm-hmm. Legendary they released at the moment, actually gives the enemy turn meter, doesn't take it away. You know, there's fundamental flaws in, <laughs> like basically, I think that fix is going to fix it for like the 1% of people that are running a team where they want to actually not like have enough resistance. I mean, you've got to need like 500 resistance yeah, to stop bonkers, it. Yeah, bonkers, man. Yeah. 
I can't imagine you're going to do that. You'd rather just have someone who can cleanse. This is, the, this is one of the issues that I feel like is in a lot of these new dungeons. Like they're very one dimensional in terms of like sand devils and then into the new one. And then even the iron twins fortress. It's just, if you've got this team or this team it's great. Otherwise it's going to take you too long. But, yeah. there you go. but anyway, um, yeah. So Vegas is in two weeks. We thought we'd just get together and have a bit of a catch up, have a bit of a chat, you know, and uh, give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be covering. Keep an yeah. eye out. We will be, uh, We'll be doing a lot of content whilst we're out there, but as much as we want to without necessarily making the whole thing about content, we also want to have like, you know, hang out with people we've never met before and actually take some time to chill a little bit, enjoy the event. But uh, we'll keep you updated. And uh, yeah, is there anything else anyone wants to say? No, no, uh, just make sure that if you're still listening now that you like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, follow everyone here on their YouTube channels because... Uh, there will be lots of interesting stuff going up uh, over the period of time that we're in in Vegas, um, and yeah, there's uh, plenty to be keeping us busy for for the rest of the year and moving on to the, uh, future projects. Obviously, with Fateless as well. So, I guess it's worth saying as well. Like, if you're there, come and say hello. Like, you know, come yeah, and, come absolutely. And like, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I wonder. I do too. wonder if you'll be recognized more times uh in america because of how much wider our audience is in the us than yeah. um uh than amsterdam uh, possibly and if if we walk around a bit with darth then we get recognized or well, he'll get yeah, recognized well, loads. get recognized a M- lot right m tashed as well um yeah yeah true uh, yeah 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 so, m tashed ash yeah yeah it's yeah. gonna be um uh, gonna be cool but yeah sweet cool. um thanks guys and uh we'll see you very soon